me and my girl are out on a Friday night and we want to have a good time, we drink Blue Dot Syrah. Ain't that right, baby? Cheers. Mother in today's deep dive, we unravel the controversy surrounding P. Diddy with allegations from multiple figures like Cassie Ventura, Kim Porter, Naomi Campbell and others casting a shadow over his legacy. Cassie Ventura emerged as a significant figure in the music industry when she met Diddy, who played a pivotal role in both her professional ascent and personal life. Born in 1986 in New London, Connecticut, Cassie's career took off after she was signed by Diddy's record label, Bad Boy Records, following a successful modeling career and the release of her hit single, Me and You in 2006. Cassie's relationship with Diddy was more than just romantic. It was intricately linked with her career growth. Diddy was both a mentor and a major influence. However, the intensity of their personal and professional entanglements eventually led to challenges. Their on-again, off-again relationship lasted for nearly a decade, marked by its high public profile and the scrutiny that came within it. Allegations made by Cassie against Diddy included emotional and psychological distress. In the allegations, Diddy is shown as a person who abused her, who videotaped her, and forced her to watch these sex tapes. In response to these allegations, Diddy has maintained a relatively low profile regarding the matter. His legal team has handled communications, focusing on disputing the claims while maintaining his public persona. I reviewed all the files and everything that she said is everything that I said with Storm Monroe three and a half years ago. Exactly what I said it was. Were you surprised about anything that came in? No, nobody is... else should have been either, young jock. You diddy doo wop bop. Because you told the truth, jock. And then after Diddy called you, you went back and tried to clean it up. That but is... your all about is off the Stevie J's. You diddy doo wop bop. Because, see, I know something that a lot of people don't know. I know that you and Kim Porter had a sit down right before she left us. And I know Kim had some very good advice to give you. And I believe that, that this is why things are happening as they're happening now. Kim was smart, wasn't she, Cassie? Kept you alive and kept you safe. I will advocate for you, but you are a victim. And I know that. Congratulations on surviving and congratulations on standing up. I'll advocate for you. That Let's stick deeper into Kim Porter, who was the mother to three of Diddy's children and a model and actress whose relationship with Diddy spanned for decades. In an explosive episode with academics, Donald Trump Jr. leveled serious allegations against Sean Diddy Combs, suggesting that Diddy might have played a role in the death of his ex-girlfriend, Kim Porter. She called me, and this was about, what, a couple, I guess a couple years ago now. Uh, maybe not even. Yeah, yeah, uh, a couple years. A couple years ago. And she called me like, Something's up with that. I go, what, what do you mean? She's like, oh, dude, Kim used to tell me, like, it was a bad, it was a bad, like, there's a lot of weird shit behind that I didn't even know. That, like, but they were like, you know, they'd do photo shoots together or whatever. They were, they were sort of friendly. Like, they'd, yeah. they'd hang out. Like, we'd see them out downtown. I'm like, I'd hang out with her. Not so much with, I think it was already sort of over there, but like, she was really afraid of him. And it, really? Yeah. Like, this goes back years. And so, like, and she was having these conversations with my ex. I was like, uh, like, I, I don't know what, like, a, a lot of people believe that whatever happened there happened with the, the woman afterwards, which was Cassie. And supposedly, no, it, like, like I said, like, I didn't, you sort of don't think about these things until now. You like, you go back and you're like, holy, like, I distinctly remember when my Vanessa was like, calls me and was like, hey man, Kim Porter died. I go, what? Like, we saw her like a couple of weeks, whatever it was, it was, you know, and, and she goes, yeah, man, there, she was sort of always in fear of something happening. And I was like, you know, maybe it's deep? natural, but like, not a lot of people die at 47 of pneumonia. Like, you know what I mean? It's like, wow. uh, especially people who, you know, obviously there's, good shape. There's a, there's a shit ton of rumors. There's Again, and I'm not, I, I'm actually not trying to fuel any kind of rumor, but I, yeah. I definitely, like, that. that's a conversation I had. Like, you know, yeah, someone yeah, yeah, who yeah. knew her well, you know, was like friend, like they text, like, was like, something, she was something like, some, so. she's like, something, she did not believe that was just natural. However, the narrative took a dark turn with the sudden death of Kim Porter in 2018 due to low bar pneumonia. Her passing initially viewed as a tragic health incident. And I called her, I'm like, what's up? And I remember she was like, I'm so sick. And that's how she sounded on the phone. And I was like, Kim, why do you sound like that? Yeah. Oh my God, yeah. seriously? Spiritual death, like something went down. 
Like I felt like whatever weird was in him was in her. I'm telling you, if she came over to my house 50 times, 50 of those 50 times her phone was blowing up and it was him. This was constantly. So this is, they're not, they're not together though at this point. They're right? not together, but it was almost like they were together. I didn't like the dynamic of what I was seeing. Like I knew that it was causing her pain, basically. It's not like you have this partner that like treats you like sh and then you move on. It's like you have this partner that treats you like sh and won't let you move on. Like if, if she was seeing somebody and he got a whiff of that, somehow she wouldn't be seeing that person anymore. And it wasn't based on something she did. It was based on something he would do. Like, there was not a chance in the world that she was going to be able to get married, be with another man, be it, just not a chance in the world. Like, it was never going to happen. So I was under the impression, like, oh, OK, he must be giving her a ton of money. And then when I realized mm -hmm. that, like, half of the jewels that she had weren't bought by him. You know, Kim was a, like, a, she was a lady. Like I said, she was old fashioned, Southern, cook breakfast in the morning, feed the kid, you know? And I didn't like that he would almost like booty call her. And I knew she didn't want to be with his ass. Like he'd booty call her. And it's like, and if she didn't show up, like the lights were not going to be on the next day. He'd broken her down so much that if she didn't, she honestly felt like she was going to be destitute. Moving to Naomi Campbell, who as one of the most iconic figures in the fashion industry has maintained a long-standing connection with Diddy that spans several decades. Naomi, celebrated for her groundbreaking career on the runway, has crossed paths with Diddy at numerous points, particularly through shared interests in fashion, charity events, and entertainment. But following the filing of an explosive lawsuit by Cassie, both Jackson and Diddy have removed their photos with Diddy from social media. This move appears to be a response to the serious allegations leveled against Diddy. Now in the shadowy corners of celebrity and power, anonymous voices often emerge, casting allegations that resonate through the media and public discourse. These voices have came up after the lawsuit Cassie Ventura claimed. The stories of those who prefer to remain unnamed, collectively known as Jane Doe, represent a poignant facet of the narrative surrounding Diddy. These anonymous victims have chosen to withhold their identities for a myriad of reasons, ranging from fear of retaliation and personal safety concerns to the potential professional repercussions of confronting a figure as influential as Diddy. These allegations failed in anonymity typically involve claims of emotional, physical, or financial abuse. The nature of these accusations often paints a picture of a power imbalance, where the alleged victims felt overshadowed and overpowered by Diddy's stature in the entertainment industry. Grooming in the context of mentorship within the industry often involves an established figure like Diddy taking a younger, less experienced artist under their wing. This process is intended to guide them through the intricacies of fame and career development. For Justin Bieber and Usher, their early exposure to the intense demands of fame under Diddy's mentorship provided invaluable lessons, but also potential pressures. For example, footage from public events or interviews where Bieber or Usher appear alongside Diddy might show moments of apparent discomfort or hesitance. These instances can be subtle, such as nonverbal cues or brief exchanges that hint at a deeper dynamic of compliance or resistance. Usher. They talk about his. Usher, I'm tired of Usher. Oh. Koofy bitch. No. Oh. Got your asshole ripped open, and the only thing you, it inspired was loyalty. They ripped your ass open. Gene didn't say it. He said, check the records at the hospital. I'm saying it. You got your ass ripped open. Then you take Justin Bieber from Lily White Canada and take him to the flavor of fuck off, the kitty edition. Get his ass ripped open. Now everything's coming out, and the first thing you do is run to Bali with another kitty right who works with the man, L.A. Reed, that sent you to the Diddy flavor freak off. Not the flavor. Uh, now you got Justin Bieber breaking up relationships and shit. Suck Odell Beckham dick at the club, and the next thing you know, he don't even want Kim no more.
And one of the most sensitive topics is with Tupac, whose relationship with Diddy was embedded within one of the most infamous chapters in hip-hop history, the East Coast-West Coast rivalry. The conflict was fueled to diss tracks, public insults, and a series of confrontations that intensified the animosity between the two coasts. The situation reached a boiling point with the shooting of Tupac in Las Vegas in 1996, an event that marked a tragic turning point in the feud. Following Tupac's untimely death, a plethora of theories emerged concerning Diddy's possible involvement. These speculations were partly spurred by the church atmosphere of the rivalry and the subsequent murder of Notorious Big. He starts blasting. Um, you say Shug looks over, he sees you. Uh, he looks right at you. Yeah, he looks at me. Okay. When he looks over at you, and then, you know, Tupac's busy getting shot. Uh, evidently, the story is Tupac's trying to either get out of the line. In the back seat or something. Yeah, what do you see happening inside of their car? I seen a bullet going shoot his head. I thought he was dead. I thought he was dead. So Orlando shot him and started cross Dre? He leaned over on the window. We rolled down the window and popped. Who was it? They would throw on my side. I would pop him. You know what I'm saying? They, but they was on the other side. Well, all four of those occasions are San Diego, Anaheim, Irvine, and Vegas. Which ones do you actually talk to Puffy at? Every one of them. Every one of them. Which of those four is it when you talk to him about murdering Tupac? It was really about both of them. Either one of them. It was uh, Tupac Anaheim. and Shug, you mean? Yeah, Anaheim. It was Harrell, you, Puffy, Zip, and a bunch of Southsiders. In, in what Puffy makes kind of a, an announcement? Yeah, that was, that was stupid as hell too, you know. What did you actually hear? What was the words, the best you can remember of what he says? Shit, he said he didn't give us anything for them dudes, that, you know? Yeah. He didn't give you anything for these guys' head? Yeah, he, uh, he said it in front of all the people, I can't believe it. You know what I'm saying? In Anaheim? Yeah, all home full of crimps. So this is after Jake got killed? So he was, he was on point, he was worried about something happening. Yeah. So he had miles off about a bunch of different stuff, so he was scared. He was scared to death, yeah. Okay. Who brought up the amount of $1 million? Shit, he did. Now adding the cherry on top to all of this, the recent raid conducted by the IRS on the properties of Sean Diddy Combs marks a significant escalation in the legal challenges facing the music mogul. This dramatic turn of events underscores the seriousness of the allegations against him and raised public and legal scrutiny to a new level. The IRS's decision to raid Diddy's properties is not an action taken lightly. Such measures indicate that there are substantial claims or evidence suggesting financial discrepancies or other illegal activities that weren't federal intervention. Should the investigations from the raid turn up substantive evidence of wrongdoing, Diddy could face serious charges that may lead to prosecution and potentially prison. The nature of these allegations combined with the financial crimes can lead to lengthy sentences and hefty fines, not to mention irreparable damage to his career. As the case unfolds, Diddy's future hangs in the balance. Could these allegations point to a larger, more disturbing truth, or are they the result of misunderstandings and media sensationalism? To the raid real quick with Diddy. Mm -hmm. Um, his sons were there and he was not there at the houses. Um, yeah. and he was, that was quiet. the worst part of that. Yeah, to see his sons being How hacked. The do you force your kids to do your perp walk? That was the, that was the worst part. And all I could think about was Kim and Misa. Mm. The girls. Just her son. He, he left their son to be walked out backwards on camera for the world to see. Three states working in tandem and they did not tell the officers who they were raiding. They went in tactical as they were instructed to. They didn't know they was raiding Diddy's house. The higher ups didn't tell anybody because they knew with Diddy being a, a fed informant that he had people in the force and they wanted to make sure that went through legit. So they ain't tell nobody whose houses they was going to. That's why you see the guns. That the cops didn't know that it was Diddy's house over there in Beverly Hills around the corner from uh, uh, 
the Playboy Mansion, they didn't know until they seen the kids. Share your views and let's discuss what you want to uncover next. Goodbye.